Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today with episode 199 of the Ham Radio Podcast. And it's me, Carrick, with ACG. I see cracks open a pop. What are we drinking today? What is that? The same shit, 99 cent fake. Oh, you can't see it. 99 <laughs> yeah. cent fake Mountain Dew. Oh, dude. Yeah, yeah, Diet Citrus Drop. <laughs> yeah, it's like generic, generic, generico as okay. the name. But, okay. Uh, what I, does it taste like? Does it taste like Mountain Dew? It tastes like Mountain Dew. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's just, you know how, it, you know, Coke, Pepsi kind of thing. It's right. got a little bit of a tinge that's different, but it's just cheap. Yeah, because that's the thing like with, with soda. You can always, that's like the one thing you can get like a budget version of, and it tastes pretty much identical. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely can. And like Walmart's got a version, and then, yeah, well, at least in America. Whatever. Yeah, you've got, yeah, and Kroger for Fred Meyer, at least here, mm. Fred Meyer. Um, I, I think it's called Piggly Wiggly in other places, but fuck? yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's the name of the stores in other places. But uh, yeah, there's always a generic cola. Mm. Yeah, and you can go pretty low. You can go as low as Tab, which I'm telling you right now, yeah. tastes tastes horrendous. Ugh. I mean, it it is the worst stuff I've ever tasted, and I can deal with some pretty shitty fucking you like, know, rip off. That, that reminds me of when I was in Canada last year around this time actually, actually more like February. But I was in there. And uh, I remember one of my good friends, Nick, uh, me and Ivan went out. And one of our good friends, Nick, was like, hey, when you come back, uh, make sure you pick up some Cheez-Its for me. And so I remember we were at Walmart. <laughs> and uh, this is a whole experience unto its own. We've never been in Canada. I've never been in Canada, rather. Ivan and, and Nick had. But um, we, we asked the employee there. We're like, hey, do you guys have Cheez-Its? They're like, what? I'm like, Cheez-Its? Do you have Cheez-Its? They're like, what are Cheez-Its? I'm like, what? I, I said, what back? I was like, what do you mean, what are Cheez-Its? Because I'm thinking, like, this is a global product. They're like, right, right. Do, do you mean cheese nips? I'm like, sure. Because mm -hmm. I'm thinking it's just an international thing. Like, they changed the name. So we buy them. Tastes like shit. <laughs> They're terrible. Yeah. Cheese nips are nasty. Yeah, not man. good. Not good. <laughs> and and the, the best part of it all was when I was standing in the middle of the aisle reading the box, and someone was pulling up with their cart. And I was clearly in their way. So I was going to say, excuse me, move around them. And they moved around me and went, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh, so, but they yeah. saw you holding the cheese. Yeah, the cheese nips. they just moved it's, around me like a very they, Canadian are, stereotype type of thing. They're so polite. Yeah, they, I love it. Yeah, so so nasty. Maybe they were apologizing for you having those in your hand. Maybe they're <laughs> like, I'm so too. sorry. Like they were like, I'm so sorry if you get those, man. <laughs> yeah, they're I, nasty. I, I love Canada. That the time I, spent I was just gonna was ask. Like, you had a good time. I mean, Edmonton isn't the best in my opinion, but Canada in general, I kind of like the the peace and quiet there and. Uh, I, I just associate it with good times because I was there for a, a hockey tournament last year. So it was, you know, it's a good memory. Oh, right. That was the hockey tournament. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, as for our standard intro stuff, as always, you can go ahead and flick a buck. Flick a buck. This time we have the intro because uh, I, I got the audio mixing correct. You got so, it figured out. Yep. So we're all good. Um, Anyway, uh, if you do flick a buck, you support the show. Uh, you can join both of our Patreons. And on my dollar tier, if you want to go the cheapest option, you get early access to this show right here. On top of that, you get Discord access. So you can chat with some of the most amazing gamers in the world. And uh, if you go a little bit higher, you can get access to, like, Patreon-exclusive videos. For example, uh, this week, I am posting a video for my puppy, which I have just acquired and uh let me tell you that has been a fucking handful holy shit like i have been you mean oh. just like not prepared for the amount of activity no i was prepared and so thank god i was but it's just it's a lot you know in the sense of you got to make sure like you're you're attending to him walking him a lot teaching him commands yeah. uh and, you know there's only so much he can learn because he's so young he's he's eight weeks old um and so, yeah, like between that and reviewing games, which uh, I'm, I'm working on Days Gone right now and another game that we can't uh, speak of. But, um, yeah, two big reviews in progress. So it's, it's like a lot at once. And plus, I got to travel for Borderlands 3 at the end of the month. So a lot going on, a lot of good stuff, but a lot going on. Uh, what about you, brother? Yeah, unfortunately, same thing as you. Like <laughs> some games you can talk about, some games you can't. But, yeah, I've got a couple reviews in the bag. Um, and, then, and then one or two that come next week. I will say the nice thing. Regardless of the review of the game, looking at how they scheduled them, mm -hmm. most, not all, but most had a fairly good uh, early code, which was nice. Yeah. And I'm, and they're spaced out, I noticed. I don't know if this is on purpose, because we always bitch about PR making dumb <laughs> mistakes, but I looked at their yeah. dates for when they come, and I'm like, if this isn't on purpose, maybe it's just luck, but they're pretty big games, and they're spaced pretty well, so that like they're Whatever not getting over... Folks. <laughs> yeah, which usually it's like, let's say Tuesday or whatever. And it's like all at the same exact hour. 
Mm-hmm. And who knows what hour that could be. 12 o'clock my time, 12 o'clock your time, 6 a.m., 8 yeah. a.m., 9 a.m., 11 a.m. But it was nice this week to see those. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, then we had Spawn Wave on the International, which was nice. fun to talk about awesome, uh, to yeah. talk about some tech. And then, um, yeah, just really, just really overall reviews. Uh, some streaming on the side when I get a chance. It's just been yeah. knuckling down. Sam, I'm, re- I'm returning to streaming tonight. I mean, it'll already have happened for most folks listening um, at- afterwards. But, yeah, I'm, I'm finally going back to streaming because I got a lot of my ducks in a row finally. You know, it was just so much shit happening. Um, and I, f- I feel good, ready to go. So I'm excited for that. Future is bright. And now let's get into uh, what we consider, I, s- I suppose, a slower week. But the main headline here is uh, a pretty big deal. Uh, we got PlayStation 5 details. So... Sony's pretty much trying to cut ahead of Microsoft, and it did a soft launch, a soft announcement, rather, of uh, the PS5. The general rundown is that VR will be supported for the PS5, which probably explains why the first state of play focused on VR so much, because I imagine that's a a part of the package Sony's going to try to push for PS5. Um, Also, PS4 backwards compatibility. Uh, There's 8K gaming, which uh, can stuff it. And on top of that, I saw ray tracing being a, a huge thing for a lot of folks um it's housed housed in the console will be an amd chip that has a cpu based on the third generation ryzen it'll have eight cores of the seven nanometer zen 2 microchip uh although the console will support 8k displaying at this resolution will be dependent on tvs catching up and also consumers <laughs> uh that's for damn sure uh, the graphics, meanwhile, will be driven by a custom version of Radeon's, uh, Radeon, sorry, uh, Navi line. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, this graphics chip will support ray tracing, something which is starting to become popular in movies and video games. Uh, although it traditionally is thought of as a lighting technique, Cerny says that there are implications beyond creating realistic environments. And I think that was the most exciting aspect for folks because it, it, it's designed uh, for a lot of people have been saying rather that uh, that can up the immersion more than anything. Um and, and we want to see a big graphical leap because between the PS3 and end of the PS3 and 360 versus the PS4 and Xbox One, obviously there has been a step forward, but it wasn't as significant as, say, a, a PS2 to a PS3 um, or the original Xbox to the 360. So uh, what do you feel about all this? You're our tech guy here on the show, so I'm sure you can go a little more in depth on, on some of the, the technology I listed. Uh, how are you feeling about the PS5? I, I saw a response article uh saying that pretty much xbox will be more expensive this time around but it'll be way more powerful so how, how do you feel about all of that it, i th- th- i mean some of the stuff that i had heard that does seem to that does seem to bear out with what i've heard but whether that turns out to be the end because remember the xbox uh original got 110 150 megahertz increase like three weeks before it released mm-hmm. and um that actually helped. So I think they're keeping it close to the vest kind of thing for a while. Right. Um, I, but o- overall, the one thing about ray tracing and paper bag in your Discord and my Discord, he did discuss this, that the the acceleration of ray tracing is like, it, it's actually, requ- there's multiple steps to ray tracing. And the, the, the paste bin leaker who leaked a shit ton of proper data in the last couple of years also leaked this early. And one of the things that states in there is that the ray tracing is more like it also does it, not that we're concentrating on it, which right. would make sense because like you you can we can already do ray tracing on our old cards now. It's just really slow. So there'll be some acceleration of it. It's cool because ray tracing, like you were saying, isn't just about lighting. There are other things you can do with ray tracing, um, uh, which I think is cool. Overall, this is what we want, though. The Jaguar CPUs are terrible in these current consoles. Right. So the, the ones, and we don't even know if it's a separate, so you have a CPU, G, GPU, or you have an APU, which is both. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think the big question is, because AMD's got Infinity Fabric, which is just a fancy name for a connector. But oh, yeah. it's like right now when they have a, a super high core chip, it's actually two chips with Infinity Fabric, which is supposed to be as fast as if they were one. Mm-hmm. And so we don't know if they're two yet. So that'll be even more interesting because if they are two, it offers the possibility of a little, maybe some upgradability later on um, with like new revisions. If they're one, then you sort of have to look like if you it, you go in and you know if you fuck around too much in there, you 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 know you get weird balance issues. Right. So that's all cool. PSVR being forward compatible is great. I think um, obviously they'll do a PSVR two because really? you can't. Well, you can't increase the resolution on a PSVR. So the uh, hardware 
it's it you're you can't add you can't make a 720p tv be 4k it doesn't work do you, you think what it, they'll it, do is kind of like a we'll, we'll call it for a lack of better words like a psvr pro rather than like a that's second... exactly it okay yeah. yeah yeah and that's why the elite we were talking about this in our podcast the elite uh controllers for the xbox they're going to work with the new xbox of course yeah xxl or whatever the fuck it's called because <laughs> people spend so much money like an elite car remember an elite controller is almost the cost of a psvr in your hand like it's 200 for a psvr it's 150 for an elite some places so um yeah technology wise i think it's pretty much what we expected there'll be some improvements um they did sort of like i don't know if this is true i'll just but i did ask a couple developers what they thought about like the storage solution mm -hmm. that sony was talking about um they sort of blew it out of proportion because they were like, Spider-Man can only swing this fast because of the current hardware, but that's actually not true because the current hardware loads the game into your RAM, not off of your hard drive on a lot of games. So the RAM is already running at incredibly fast speed. You're buffering gotcha. into your RAM. So it's like, that's why you do have games that are light speed. You do have game, you know, very fast, right? Mm -hmm. And they were showing a video of like Spider-Man and they were like, oh, we can only swing this fast because of this. Well, technically also it's artistic. Right. You wouldn't want Spider-Man to swing really fast. So it's sort of a bullshit, it, it, and I would call bullshit on Microsoft. Can... Okay. Yeah, I would call bullshit on Microsoft, Nintendo, if anybody did that. It was more of a, that was sort of like one of those times right. when you're like, blast processing. Yeah, so the, the direct yeah. quote, uh, by the way, all this information I'm citing is coming from GameSpot. Um, Cerny demonstrated the change an SSD introduces by to gaming by comparing a load sequence from Insomnia Experiment on a standard PS4 Pro and a dev kit of the next-gen PS... Oh, sorry, I was going to say next-gen PS5, but they really haven't announced it's the PS5. <laughs> next-gen PlayStation. Uh, on the former, it was around 15 seconds, while on the latter, it was 0 0.8 seconds. This, Cerny added, has implications on how the world can be rendered too, which in turn impacts how quickly Spidey can move through the world. On the new hardware, the camera moves through the city much quicker as the hardware is capable of keeping up with the rendering requirements. So the, now that I read that too, and, and it's fine print, I, I also wonder, you know, as, that's, a, that's a PS4 game, right? That's created for the PS4, and obviously they yeah. want to make the PS5, hopefully it seems like, from what I can judge, significantly more powerful. So when the games start maximizing all of that, can you can these upgrades still be accounted for right they're saying like oh we'll move x amount of times faster but let's say we brought a a, a ps5 game in trying to really push the limits and would it still be that 0 0.8 second low time like i doubt it right? yeah no you're absolutely right that's another thing it, it, it's also the same thing that you hear a lot of people saying oh it'll be more powerful than a pc but all of these updates will come to the pc version of the amd chip too right so you're, you're, yes, you're absolutely right. Like, it's almost like saying, oh man, we have, you know, a ton more memory. Mm -hmm. Everything will be faster, but it's like, no, we'll just make textures twice as big. So everything yeah. just takes, you know what I mean? So you get that. Um, but yeah, you're, no, you're absolutely right. That will happen too. We'll mm -hmm. see improvements. And I like the, that or that writing that you just read a little better because it says implications. And that's absolutely correct. Yeah. That part is, it will have implications just like I have M2 memory in my PC. That has implications. I boot instead of 32 seconds, I boot in like two seconds, right? Right. So you'll see that AMD already has this kind of thing available uh, for purchase on their website. It's a caching software that allows you to cache whatever you use a lot onto your fastest drives. And that's pretty much what this will be. The real question though, Maddie, is gonna be, will it be this fast for multiple games? The reason why is most likely, it'd be like an SSD with a very fast cache Mm -hmm. And that'll be where your game is, the game you're right. playing. But if you were to jump to another game, then you have to not only fill that new cache with data, right. but you have to also write the, you have to, you have to write it in there, plus you have to play it. And mm -hmm. so that'll be interesting to see, like, for somebody like you or I, if I go from one game to another, will I see, like, how are they going to account for me jumping into the new game and wanting to play at full speed? Right. And that's, and that actually will be a thing I mean, that is a thing. Like, mm -hmm. it's already a thing with M2 memory, because I use M2 memory, and there it's super fast. It's amazing. Um, but it still will, it still gets, uh, bottle, you know, bottlenecked. And then the CPU, I think a lot of this is also the CPU, dude, because the Jaguars are terrible. Most games are compressed, so it uncompresses, and that's CPU usage. So gotcha. these CPUs are so much more powerful that the compression is, like, insanely fast. And then off a hard drive, 
to uncompress it takes longer. So now it'll be supposedly an SSD with a cache of some kind, which will be even faster. That's that's all awesome. And Xbox Sounds has good. already yeah. said they Holy were shit. doing it. Yeah, yeah. This is it's a cool step, and it's what PC users. I think a PC user probably won't be like as stunned. But specific games, you bet Sony will do whatever they can to some way make, and so will Xbox if they have something like this. They'll right. do whatever they can to make it look like that's something never before done. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a, a mar, uh, like a bull, you know, like a bullfighter kind of thing. Where I mean, you like, doesn't you it, know, it benefits both parties to try to catch up the PC as much as possible, yep. just because they're both seemingly starting to share onto the pc like especially xbox's yeah. side of things but especially playstation xbox. we saw them lose a couple of exclusives all of quantic dream and, and go straight to the epic store um and while that oh true that, i don't think that benefits playstation i i imagine they're tinkering with the idea of and i think they have in the past of being able to play a playstation game off the pc um there's a way i think to like mirror it i want to say or something along those lines i i can't remember exactly the details but i could have sworn i heard playstation was tinkering with that too so if there's like a, a another giant gap between them, like there was when we started the PS4 and Xbox One, I think that could present its own set of problems. So, based Better off your knowledge, it. would you say they've they've closed the gap a little bit at yeah. this point? Yeah. Okay, yeah, a lot. Yeah, because storage is a big deal. Right. Um, o o but also, you have to look at the cost. They can't make it too big, otherwise, the cost of the console. You have to offset that. I think Microsoft is in a much better position to subsidize by just using Game Pass's funds to pay for. To pay off. So, like, if I sell you an Xbox, I can say, I'll take a $100 loss because Game Pass is paying mm -hmm. a shit ton of money. And then if you succeed by selling a ton, you actually make money anyway. If right. you don't succeed, you've paid it off with Game Pass. I think Sony's in a little bit of a different position. They also don't want to be left behind. So I, I think they're both going to be really close. And all it's going to do is, yeah, bring them closer to PC, which then makes it easier for a dev. Because mm -hmm. a dev looks at a PS5 and an Xbox and goes, okay, we're, they still are going to make Xbox One versions. They've Microsoft has made that clear, but that'll be your low setting, and then you'll have like your medium setting might be your Xbox X, and then your Ultra would be the PS5 and the um, the uh, the Xbox whatever next right. next, what, what which is cool. What confused me was when I was reading it, it seemed like they really hyped up the 8K gaming, and I looked at some monitors, and they were like four five thousand like dollars yeah. insanely expensive now like you said they are clearly keeping it closer to chest by what what would what would stop them from mentioning uh we'll say current ps4 games could now run at 60 fps consistently on uh all of our on our new system uh the only reason well two reasons it requires a patch so the dev has to be alive because a lot of devs will mm. evaporate and move on so you have to actually have a dev that's mm. one of the problems with backwards compatibility um, so you have to have a dev alive, you know, physically there to patch it. Then you have physics. Some games are tied to their physics, locked to 30 FPS to handle their physics, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, it can happen for most, I'm sure. I'm, I'm absolutely sure. It just, it does require a physical adjustment because you don't want it to go too fast and have something crazy happen that you never planned for. You know, you're like, okay, we're updating it 45 frames per second, 30 frames per second, what have you. Everything's fine. We can double it. And then you double it and shit starts. We've all had that moment in Skyrim when you can hear fruit in a room going <laughs> because the physics got fucked yeah, up. And you're yeah. like, what's happening? Um, so that I, I would say the 8K is probably bullshit. It's typical PR bullshit. That to me is the most, and I've seen 8K versus 4, and 8K does look better. Right. Um, but I think it's, I think that's the PR, mm -hmm. like, like because here's, we well, yeah, and Maddie, not to be rude, as long as you've got the right HDMI um, cabling and connector in the back of your console, you can do 8K right now today. It's just your, what, what concessions you're making. Mm -hmm. So you could do a very LucasArts games, let's say like, you know, one of those point and clicks, yeah. you could do that 16K because you don't need to worry about a fucking thousand things being drawn. You could do it at insanely high resolution as long as the bandwidth of your HDMI cable or display port was high enough. So that's the, pro that's the thing people don't understand about resolution is you can say whatever you want, but frame rate and then action on the screen are what really dictate what you can do with the resolution. So I think they'll checkerboard too, which is what they do now to hit four, you know, the tricks, um, which is fine. Um, yeah. where they do a bunch of tricks to get to 4K, where it's like not native 4K um, and 
that stuff seems to work for a lot of people. But yeah, it seemed like well, that was typical what we would expect from Nintendo or Microsoft whenever they have new tech to sort of pretend Makes it's sense. another number, right? But yeah. It's that's all, remember when it was 16 bit, then 32 bit, mm -hmm. then N64? It's sort of like that. It's just like we're going to double bit. a bunch of shit. Yeah, gotcha. Um, the other aspect is obviously the games. You know, we see that PS4 is doing, or PS5 yeah. is doing PS4 backwards compatibility, and it stops right there. Uh, outside of PSVR support, which is, I guess, a sense of backwards compatibility in, in its own right. Sure. Um, but it seems like Xbox has the edge there, right? Because yeah, that I, goes I all like the way it, back to know, the That might Xbox speak to yeah, a lot more consumers. You know, when they see 8K, especially, like I said, you know, they look at, and that's not to dumb down all the other cool stuff that Sony announced, but when, when they see sure. 8K, um, they're probably like, what does that matter to me? Versus, oh, look at how far back I can go. I can not only access, let's say you just buy the console day and date. Right, like the, the the Microsoft Xbox, like you said, XXL comes out, okay? right? And, and and you're picking it up. You don't have money for a game, but let's say you a have Game Pass, b you got a 360 game on the shelf, c you got an Xbox yeah. One game on the shelf. You got games day one. How cool would that be? Especially yeah. if a lot of those Xbox yeah, One exclusives. I have a feeling that's what that's how Microsoft will sell. Right, especially if the Xbox One exclusives yeah, have again. like huge updates. That's Price, game. right? I mean, that's a big deal. Like, if they're I honestly do believe, Maddie, that they'll have that both of them will have weird deals. That's the mm -hmm. one big thing I think will happen. Is like I don't know if it'll be Microsoft or Sony, but I have a feeling we're gonna see something odd, like Microsoft saying, you know, two ninety nine with a, a two year subscription of Game Pass or mm -hmm. something. Because remember, they're trying to push that. Sony's trying to push something slightly different. Nintendo's trying to do their thing. Right. And so that would be really interesting to see if, you know, we don't know how Microsoft is doing i mean they're doing well financially for sure insanely well with mm -hmm. game pass but we don't know if that matters enough to where they'll be like we want to just get consoles in the in the door so we're going to subsidize that and give you it for cheaper or if they'll make you you know sign on the dotted line for a, a one year mm -hmm. um but i mean even look at state of decay did you see the numbers insane it was it just went up another million yeah it went up another million which that makes means... me happy i like that game <laughs> No, no, no. So do I. Yeah, yeah. But God damn, it's, know, it's like a lot six more. Mil it's at six million. Yeah, it's it's a number that if you or I were sitting together and we were like, "What do you think they're at?" I would say what they would be happy at one point five million. Yeah, like I I'd be like, say, they'd I would, be ecstatic. I would have a million. Yep. Yeah, and you just look at it going like, "The fuck is happening?" And uh, Sea of Thieves, the only game I was rightfully corrected on this that has not been saved by Game Pass is Crackdown Three. Really? Strangely enough, that's yeah. that's odd. So maybe Isn't that odd? Uh, that's odd, but maybe it's a good message to Microsoft that people aren't just going to Not all games up. can be... Right. They, right. Like, they got to focus yeah. on quality and, and make sure they make, like, good exclusives and it's not just going to always be... Because to cut myself off here, I, I feel like, um, for example, Sea of Thieves, people saw the potential in. State of Decay, even though it had some tech issues, once again, that's a game that had a lot of potential and I thought was good at right. launch. You know, it had its issues, but it was still a great game, especially it was, like, what, 20 bucks, 30 I think, yeah. maybe? Um, you know, so th those games, I think, deserve their player bases. But Crackdown, you know, I, I remember when I reviewed it, I was like, this is just mindless shoot 'em up fun that can work for some, but uh, they did it for two previous games. It didn't really move things forward. It felt very much like a, right. a 360 game. You know, it didn't, didn't feel like anything new. But um, yeah, I I'm most worried about the price points. That's where I sit on it Me all. Because uh, I too. just, I feel like there's always that one outlier who, who overprices it. Um, despite what they show well, there's the, the the confident sony is depressing because we've seen them tell us to get a second job mm -hmm. and the confident <laughs> xbox has been depressing because they they put connect in even though connect made sense business-wise because of the sale mm -hmm. uh how many it sold but that's the thing i worry about too dude is like that's why i'm thinking that they'll try to bundle it like what if they're like four this could be a weird bun bundle but like what if they bundle it where it costs more for le or costs less for for more so it's like okay 4.99 or 3.99 with a one year because remember this is something dreamcast did dreamcast was selling for 99 dollars, but you would sign up for a year of something i can't remember it was like comcast or something oh, God. so <laughs> like like that kind of stuff yeah i can't remember that kind of stuff is uh is not unheard of mm -hmm. and it would make sense, especially to get it in the door, right? Because you get the yeah. you, once you get it in the door, that's what matters. Is almost no game company sold a shit ton at the starting and then petered out. 
it yeah. has happened, but it's it's much more rare. I feel like with Microsoft, they shouldn't wave off their strategy, which has been working, which is just constantly undercutting the competition, especially exactly. when they're trying to get a fresh start. I know it might hurt yeah. them a little bit off the get go, but you know, look suck what it happened. up. Yeah, look what happened with Sony when their console was priced a hundred dollars less than Microsoft's, and then yep. they took a one jab at the backwards compatibility, and that was it. Or I'm sorry, not yep. the backwards compatibility, the used discs. The, the used discs, yeah. Yeah, and, and right. Even though there, both of them still have the same problem. Yeah. With you, like they both. Right. Remember when Sony was like, yeah, you could, here's how you do this and blah, blah, blah. And everybody was like, they're so pro consumer. And now mm -hmm. both of them still have a shit ton of stuff connected to online yeah. for single player stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. it, it didn't we, we sort of got it snuck up on us regardless mm -hmm. of the, the original. It's like complaint. the fate was inevitable in a, in a really it was. strange, it was. eerie way. You know, things ended yep. up going more digital. People were more like, oh, I like digital now. You know, I like just not yep. having to go to Walmart or GameStop and downloading it from my couch. I don't want to leave after work. I'm like, yeah, this is what they fucking said in 2013. And I, I'll get yeah, it. Exactly. I, was, I was one of those people who was like, nah, fuck, you know, fuck no use games. Fuck uh, no physical media. Uh, like I said, I think, I think everyone said this for a while now, but Microsoft was on to something. They were in the right direction. They they knew where the industry was heading. They were just, you know, it's it's a weird thing with entertainment, man. If you're like too ahead of the cut, uh, you you know, people will just brush you off. Yeah, they'll just brush you off or think that you're, I mean, look at how many even tech industry giants where people look at them and be like, your idea is dumb. Yeah. And then like the next year, you're all, well, we're there already. Mm -hmm. Like that's exactly where we are. It, it, it just requires one person to stand out front and be, and be the, <laughs> the time, I feel like it's all time yeah. like even with youtube you know like you, you, you it's a completely yeah. different example but you, you can post a review day and date when the embargo lifts or you can post it like a, a day after and your timing might be better and your video might do better because you know your whole everyone's inbox has got flooded with reviews and then yep everyone's now seeing and then yours your pops off at the end yep. yeah yeah it just happened to me Very with world war z i i had to re-upload it as you know I and, saw that. Yeah. yeah, and when I did it, it completely outperformed what it was initially doing by like a landslide. And obviously those that viewership combined to like a pretty good number, but like at face value, I was like, holy shit, you know, it actually I didn't do that, I didn't plan that out, but the way it worked, it's it's crazy. There's something to be said about close but no cigar still paying off. Mm -hmm. And there really is like so if everything hits at you know, six AM or whatever, there is something to be said about being that person that, you know, eight hours later hits and people are looking for a second opinion they or like you said their in inbox you know they've hit the bell on 10 websites and they, you know they only watch one or two and, and everybody shows up for that other one there i don't think it's as easy to figure out yeah but it can certainly pay off i've definitely seen that pay off for people right sure on. and it, it, might, it might pay off for these companies i all i care about is vr i'm really happy psvr is forward i think it's ancient tech so i can't wait for a psvr pro pro mm -hmm. or whatever um i'm sure xbox will just either do wmr or name their own like get a headset from one of the wmr manufacturers write xbox on it and sell it which is yeah. all they need to do like that's they quite literally could do that they could just buy an hp fucking headset and put an xbox stamp on it if they don't want to just say they all work um so i'm excited for vr because dude these new systems what they described that can easily run a WMR, mm -hmm. and that that to me, 1440p, that's actually very exciting that, yeah. to see consoles hitting VR. Yeah, absolutely, because VR presumably is, I'd say, the future to to elevate games into a, another space. You know, they kind of they're they're standoff experiences, but we have yet to have that full on game that that really brings a. Uh, an adventure like a lengthy yeah. you know eight to ten hour adventure um outside of i think there's that game coming out on psvr that blood and pursuit or i always fuck the name up but uh, well and then there's like bethesda doing a good yeah, job Skyrim with their current VR. titles yeah yeah but like i i, I new... just wonder if their next one hmm. oh the new new one there's a new one no 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 I, I I, well there's the steam vr or whatever it is which apparently yeah. steam's been developing three vr the games index. For, for like multiple years oh um, gotcha. and and also i just i would like to see i when i said new i meant like new games that aren't re-releases of old ones getting vr yeah. support and and really being yeah. like an adventure designed for vr around vr that is like a full-on product not a a two-hour experience or a, well a i have a question game. for you then so let's say the new what's their new game what's bethesda's 
it won't be Elder it'd be outer or it'll be um Starfield, right? Yeah. What's yeah. the next? So would you be acceptable would you rather have a completely different game or would you just be totally fine if Starfield was also VR? As an on top of a game you could just play with the screen day and control. date. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you because I'm okay with that from Bethesda. I think they've pretty yeah. done. I, th I think they've done a pretty good job yeah. supporting I was, VR. I was gonna say I, I don't. Yeah, like I, I'm not against like if if a game releases no, and has VR support yeah. along it support along it. By all means, I, I more so meant um, those those games just like, for yeah just for like a PSVR game. You know, it's like developed for the PSVR strictly. Um, I want to see VR next generation really get that type of push where they start making just for PSVR games that are pretty mind-bendingly good and 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 are yeah. expansive not just like i said you know truncated versions of uh series with like wolfenstein cyber pilot you know something like that or 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 dumbed down versions um like a full focused vr title that that really can blow some minds and elevate gaming because i think uh the thing with vr is i feel like a lot of people don't buy in until they try it and, and for some it's like okay cool whatever but uh, for me, it was one of those, like, I played it, and I said, okay, I feel like this is the future because we're so used to always having the control in our hands, kicking our legs up on the couch, you know? And that, that's, like, I think the the pinnacle video game experience, but I feel like there's room for another uh, yeah. area where, where, where things can feel different and play differently and the experience is translated differently because of that. Because sometimes people just get, like, shut down, right? Like, you get that, that mental barrier, and it, everything just kind of glances off. You, I guess, burn out a little bit because it's the same style of gaming all the time. So I feel like that's also where VR could thrive. It's just something different. And if you're doing big, yeah. crazy games through them, that could really help out, too. I think no... I, I really do believe No Man's Sky is probably going to be the current... the big... because they have they have gone in and like adjusted shit for no man's sky so mm. that everything you do, like even your inventory is based, which is not what Bethesda did. God bless them because I love fallout four and VR, but they, yeah. it's not other than the pit boy, which is great. I mean, it's amazing to look at the pit boy and be like, Whoa, <laughs> that's fucking that. shit. So cool. <laughs> yeah. You're like, that's pretty fucking insane. But, but you could still tell even grim just got a WMR and he's, he's like, how do I move? Like there's some movement issues, but like no man's sky, it looks like they're, totally like making it the star and it's still going to be no man's sky mm -hmm. but um those kind of experiences yeah when somebody actually sees it and is just there's something about it that's it is that cool aside it won't replace pancake versions of games mm -hmm. but it it does offer something that nothing else really does right like it, it's pretty insane well uh it seems like PlayStation got ahead of the cut. We'll see what Microsoft has at E3. and then... I have a question before oh, we move on. By all means. What do you think about the controller? Will any of the two controllers, PSVR or PS4 or Xbox, see any major changes? Removal of the pad, the touch pad, removal of the light bar, switching of the sticks and where they are. Right. Uh, I, I feel like that's think? more of Microsoft's thing to make a more customizable controller right out the gate. Uh, I feel okay. like, but if anything, I think Microsoft's controller, and I still believe, is the better controller. I think the reason people toot the horn to yeah. Sony with their controller is because DualShock, what was it, 3 or whatever, was so bad. The one for the PS3. So bad, yeah. Yeah, it just, it was very lightweight. It, it broke easily. Uh, the, the, the width of the controller, and, and, and for people with big hands, it just felt uncomfortable to play with. Um, and I didn't like it all that much, where, where I always thought Xbox had a good idea and a, a good framework outside of the Duke controller. While that's a, an OG, that still uh, was way too big as a kid. Um, but I, I feel like Microsoft should just stay the course. Uh, if, if those dev kit leaked images I put in quotes were, were anything to go off of, um, which seemed like Sony went from having a touch screen to or a touch pad to a screen on their controller... Uh, that seemed like a nice sidestep for it because it looked like a, a wider version. You know, you saw more of curves on the outside where if you look at right now, I actually have it right next to me. You can kind of see it's 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 a diagonal line slanted up, whereas yeah. the leaked dev image is kind of, it came outwards a little bit more. And it seemed like while the controller, you can see is tilted back, it seemed like it was more straight up flat, uh, which allowed for, you know, the, the bumpers to... Um, line up with your fingers Be in a, a lot better easier. spot yeah, yeah yeah where you're not like reaching because that's the thing i've noticed in the ps4 yeah. you you move your hands very much you reach and your uh, finger has to do this it has to go from here to here yeah to get it it's a weird it's there's something slightly off exactly so. and it's not a bad controller design i like the ps4 mm -mm. controller but it, it stood to improve which is why i expect a more significant change along the lines of 
what PlayStation gotcha. is doing moving up to the PS5. What do you think? Do you think it's going to be any different? Yeah, I don't know. I, I do believe that Microsoft will probably put buttons on the back. Um, Microsoft has always played with buttons on the front, like and paddles. I'm a fan, and I know no one else is. Um, but yeah, I think if they don't put ABC, XYZ on the front, they will probably do like the Elite, and they'll have one or two buttons in the back. I think that's a good step. Also, I think there's a ton of games where I don't like pressing the PS, because I have the PS4 as well, and you have the little tiny select buttons mm. right next to the sensitivity pad. And it's like, they're not really tactile. Um, the idea of having, you know, back finger buttons for, you know, something you don't do a lot would, I think, would be a bonus. Okay. Um, so... I, th I think the Elite is sort of their plan. Mm -hmm. And then you make a bunch of them so it's cheaper, right. right? Like, so right now they're selling them as Elites. But then, like, maybe it becomes the de facto or very close to the de facto for mm -hmm. the next system. Okay, which so I'd love. my question with that speculation is, let's say we get a third party game and, and let's say that controller you just suggested with Microsoft happens, it's got the paddles in the back. I actually have a, a scuff right here, which has, has paddles the in paddles. The back. And let's say, you know, Microsoft does that. We got a third party game. PlayStation's controller does not have paddles in the back, but those are additional buttons on the Xbox controller. Now, are you imagining those paddles are just buttons you can remap a to the right bumper or I'm sorry, the right paddle on the back? Or are you imagining these are like brand new buttons that add to the gameplay um, that that are almost like a black and white from the original Xbox on top of the LBRB L2? That's actually a good question because I'm dealing yeah. with that on a game. I don't know if I can. And it's one of the other games I'm reviewing. And mm -hmm. they, it's an old game ported onto a new system. Mm -hmm. And there is a weird button combination that I'm pretty sure is exactly what you're talking about. Where I'm like, the fuck am I doing I don't remember doing this right. prior. Like, this feels a little off. It feels like there's too many buttons to do one little thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that I don't know. That's a, It's a good point. It's like, is it going to be, you know, C and D? Like, button C and D is like a completely <laughs> different thing. Or is it just going to be your combo, you know, where, like, you can add two buttons and remap it? I think that's also fine. It just feels like Microsoft's not going to stick with the Elite as just the elite it feels to me like that's the one place where they they look at stuff like you said they are sort of messing around they're the ones who are like yeah the elite you know the original xbox's d-pad isn't good so they fix that right on. um bluetooth in the original xbox which i have doesn't work very far maybe mm -hmm. 15 feet maybe 20 and the new bluetooth they put in the gen 2s are much better um yeah that's a good point man because then you also have backwards compatibility to worry about like if you get a new game uh, and it also works on your that. original xbox can you add a C button? But the thing is, they do have to move forward too. Right, I mean, right, right. At right. some point, at some Can't point, you're trapped in history. Yeah, yeah. It's a good question. I, I did. I didn't think about that. That's. I don't. I guess remapping is probably the best bet, but then it's a little less function. I was hoping for more functionality, but right. You know, additional buttons for things to happen. <laughs> to put it simply, but um... yeah, because they're already they're doing mouse and keyboard too. Mm -hmm. Like Xbox is, mm -hmm. allows mouse and keyboard, so maybe, maybe they it don't. Would be a good option for remapping but also we'll say with console mmos which are starting to trend maybe upwards yeah. and especially in the next generation you could you could have additional hotkeys through those buttons that you could or, or radial where you hold it and now your a b and x y do different things right what, i don't know what the term is modifier key yeah right, right that's right. true could this be. that's gonna be dude in a weird way that's almost more interesting to me than all the hardware and stuff is like yeah. the input because microsoft with mouse and keyboard has already shown that they're pretty cool with that and it's like what what else can we see mm. which would be very fun yeah. very fun time will tell but now we move on to uh news that i know you're really pumped about and a lot of people were i've never even heard of this game so how dare you yeah <laughs> a, a new re-release i guess we could call it um 13? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 13 is coming back. PS2 game. Cell shaded FPS character in a world with Borderlands 3 coming out. Why do I care about another mm -hmm. cell shaded FPS? Let me know. Um, so it was the first it was one of the first games that I noticed where they used the graphics to actually inform the gamer versus just being cool graphics. So okay. it was a comic book style game. But if you bought the skill to hear enemies farther away, you actually saw the word thump when a person walked written like a comic book. Right. in the game world so you could see them walking towards you by reading a comic almost it'd mm -hmm. be like thump 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 as they walked and oh, i thought that was I really like that. at the 
Yeah, it was next level at the time. Like, I'm sure somebody's done it since, but at that time, it was like you were living in a comic book, and it told the story okay. via you would you would do a, a mission, and then David Duchovny, who was doing the voiceover, would like there would be a comic book, and it would nice. flip, and there would be action in the cells, and um, it was it, Thirteen's been made into three TV shows, one movie, but basically it's about somebody who is framed for killing the president, or may have you, you as you're playing. It depends on which of the versions you're watching. And um, and the political conspiracy behind it, and why he's sure. number thirteen, and what the other numbers are. So it's a little like Hitman in that way, where Hitman's number agent forty seven. Um, but to me, it depends because they showed the graphics, and that didn't look so. It it didn't look cell shaded. It looked like it was going to go with a neon look, which would also be fine. Um, I'll, I want to see what it looks like graphically because then it'll tell me if they're going to continue with the skills on a monopia, which is what you see is what you get kind of thing. Um, but overall, it was just really fun, dude. All the weapons were awesome. I mean, cr everything had a really cool impact to it. Xbox and original PS2. Is that what you said? PS2? Uh, yeah, I thought was... it was just a PS2 game. I, I no, it's on Xbox 2. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay, yeah. so do you don't think this is going to be exclusive to the PlayStation? I saw the announcement well, come they... through PlayStation. Exactly. And so I don't know. But I know the original is Xbox, but it's not any, like... It, I, I don't see any reason why... Uh, PlayStation wouldn't have an exclusive. It's just one of those things where, like, mm. maybe a company, you know, approached them and they were like, "Yeah, we'll support you." So, I mean, whatever it's on, I'll be playing it because, dude, if I don't know if it's a remaster or remake, I don't know if it's like a sequel or if it's if David Duchovny will return for the voice because David Duchovny isn't the best voice actor in the world. But it was cool at the time because we hadn't seen a lot of voice actors and real actors show up. Mm. I don't know if you've done this, but you'll play a game like Punisher, which I love, but Thomas Jane didn't do the voice. So you were, I was just like, hmm, this is not, this is not the person that I want to hear. So that'll be interesting to see, like see they who they redo it. Yeah, like are they going to use David Duchovny? Are they going to use somebody else? Um, I, dude, it's so fun. It is just fucking a fun game. Is it? Just it reminds a me of World War Z. Extra abilities, maybe. There's some or... RPG elements, yeah. Okay, some skill yeah. Elements. I'm just yeah. trying to get a feel if it's just like you know, because I know, like we said, it's a PS2 Xbox game, so I'm trying to feel out the scope of the gameplay. Yeah, I mean, the only um, what was the time splitters? Time splitters. It's like there was some elements of that okay. that sort of it sounds uh, reminds it sounds like, me of. Uh, from what I've gathered and from what you've told me, it sounds kind of like a hidden gem that combines elements from other games. To yes. Try to make its own and actually succeeded on creating its own identity, unlike a yeah. lot of others. Okay. Sounds... Yeah, I was surprised because I, I got the trailer and I went to comment on it and I thought I was going to be the only one. And like that yeah, was a very popular comment. trailer. I saw your comment. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you see my comment? I you were like I was number just one. Like, what? Yeah, I was just like, what the fuck? Because out of the blue, Jesus, if you had told really? me Urban, Urban Chaos is another Xbox and PS2 game, that one would surprise me. And I would say 13 because we talk about 13 in the Discord about once a month. Somebody will be like, remember that associated shooter and blah 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 and somebody be like 13 you'd be like yeah man and no one lives forever would be the only other one that i think gets talked about as much um mm -hmm. so i would i i was i was really stoked to see that many people excited about it like yeah. really excited yeah it's, yeah, it's crazy wait, you know the thing though is, is as a kotor fan i just wonder i really wonder man <laughs> i can't help but fucking wonder and everyone listening to the show knew this is coming but i just i gotta say again i can't help but fucking wonder how that game hasn't gotten re-released i really like a remaster a remake i don't care man i don't get it especially well, if it, they, in a world where this game can come back and, and not I don't, I don't ever say this in a derogatory yeah. manner just like no 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 out of no, left field sense. hidden gems not a huge audience even if this is a game that can vibe with nowadays audience i just don't understand why a classic a classic series <laughs> doesn't have a return I That's have a strange. feeling we will get a third one now. Now that the TV, now that the Lucas Arts has said that they're returning to mm. the old Knights of the Old Republic. I mean, I think it starts with TV shows or movies now. Yeah, it seems or, that way. You know what I mean? A popular game becomes Witcher, the TV show, mm -hmm. and then a popular TV show becomes a, a game. Mm -hmm. And my personal belief is this is already a popular MMO that's actually getting a single player expansion this month, a huge one. Um, that's been going successfully. LucasArts said, oh, we're not returning to Old Republic, and now they suddenly are, are. saying that they are. They announced that, what, two weeks ago? Yeah. So I don't... I, dude, I don't think you should be... I don't know about the remake of that, because it's Bioware. It's those I, those old voice actors. You never quite know if there's legalities. 
to gotta like be. read. That's what I'm saying. There's got to yeah. be something funny going on because I feel like that's a that's yeah. a sure shot, right? But dude, what would be a sure shot? Remember, that was an Xbox exclusive. Imagine if Microsoft came out at this E3 and was like, "Hey, guess what, guys? Obsidian's making Kotor 3. <laughs> it it would fuck it, and there is nothing stopping something. I think like, you I'm not hear saying it's happening. Scream all the way from New York. <laughs> I would. I'd be here, and I'd be like, "What the? F is Maddie here?" <laughs> <laughs> I'd, yeah, I, it, uh, my my neighbors would probably think I was getting murdered. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, no shit. It's I've, I mean, that kind of stuff I feel is possible now that they said uh, that the that the uh, is it a movie or a TV show? Did they say they just or said that they have plans to develop something for it and that okay. they're looking into it? They never said show or movie, but presumably, given that the directors have been rumored to be the guys who worked on Game of Thrones, who are working on the Mandalorian, I'd imagine it's going to be a TV show. And depend, I mean, it could be, dude, Knights, people just don't get it. Star Star Wars, whatever, you may like it, but Knights, the, the Old Republic time frame. It's its own the, thing. The amount, it's beyond, it's it's the coolest. I mean, I'm not even like trying to diss on, Cur I love Luke and Darth Vader, and, but mm -hmm. when you like look at Old Republic, the amount of fresh narrative that's there is fucking beyond belief. Yeah. And far more interesting than, I think the more tropish stuff we have now, which is it's like you are the last hero, medieval, medieval. Yeah, it, it's yeah. I, I think a lot of people who aren't into Star Wars now, or who are going to get introduced to Star Wars, um, even like adults who who grew up through you know when Star Wars first became a thing, I think the Old Republic is that thing that could reignite a lot of their love or spark a love for Star Wars because it's just so. I remember as a kid, like, I wasn't a big Star Wars fan, and then I played KOTOR, and just the idea of, so well, not sword, sorry, vibroblades. And, vibroblades. And, and, it's and, a big like, deal, though. Grittier right? armor and, and more metallic, mm -hmm. uh, almost, you know, like a medieval knight-style armor. I was like, this is yep. Star Wars, but it's not. You know, it's it's so different. Um, yep. And, and the uh, early days of some planets, I made a whole video talking about it, so... Uh, but uh, yeah, man, it just it it blows my mind. But I don't want to take away from uh, thirteen with that. Um, so this definitely looks like a game I'm gonna personally pick up and play just because I love cell shaded art yeah, style. Like wait. I've always been a big fan of that. And what's great about cell shaded is I'm sure the developers of thirteen are like, oh, perfect, because that that art style ages so well when you uprise it. Yeah, insanely yeah. well. So that that works out for them. Um, where, where this could be a game someone can nab off the shelf. We talk all the time about how box art and, and concept art on the back do wonders for selling games. Oh, this looks yep. cool. And yep. uh, 13, I think a lot of people might be, based off what I watched, will be shocked that, oh, shit, this was <laughs> originally a PS2 game. Because it could get that yeah, feeling ancient. like, uh, like I don't know how well it controlled or, or how fast the game moved but uh, when you were playing it, at least. But um, it could give that feeling of how Borderlands Game of the Year Edition got where the new update something changed with the movement speed and and how fast the game moved like there did was you like the change mode. loved it. it it was honestly oh, okay. some of the most fun i've had playing borderlands it was oh, okay. very fast paced quick kills uh the fps helped a lot the, the field of view helped a lot but there was something with the movement speed and it felt better to play and i'm wondering if you're going to see that with like something like 13 which is just a cell shaded fps where you move level to level i heard the campaign's kind of lengthy yeah, on 13, it was, yeah. yeah. Wow. But I think it also was, If it's been a long time since I played it. I think there was a lot of, um, not secrets necessarily, but uh, stealth. I do remember a distinct, no, because you got a crossbow. And I remember the crossbow, like once you get it, um, there was a lot of like moments where you could like go slow. And then they told huge stories in the cutscenes. That was the weird thing is like the cutscenes with the comic books. It was quite lengthy. It wasn't like... Not that it's not lengthy today, but it costs more because it's CGI. So I think right. they cut down the amount of time. Um, the it's only other thing I could compare. Wow. Yes, it's originally Ubisoft. Um, the only thing I could <laughs> compare it to, strangely enough, is Agent Four is the new Hitman Two because hmm. Hitman Two's cutscenes are like a pastel paper look because they didn't have the money to do CGI, but the cutscenes are longer because of that. And I it, like see. I love back that. then. I think that's why. Yeah, I, I yeah, love was, seeing it, like creativity blossom under restrictions. It, it's it's where the best mm. storytelling comes from. I feel because it it just gives new looks and feels to. It, it feels like there is a true break between the gameplay and the storytelling. I think this game will right will do well. Uh, actually, I'm I'm looking at your favorite site, How Long to Beat, and they're saying uh, it's about an average of ten hours. 
You say that's right? That seems right. I would say tw- I would say probably for somebody like me, might maybe sneak a little bit more like 12. But yeah, no, no, yeah, that seems that seems totally normal. Cool, cool. I'm surprised they even have that logged into their. Uh, I was into their well, site yeah. Right? I mean, I'm assuming that like once it opened, people went because it hasn't been. It's been around a long time, but I don't think it's been around yeah, that long. This, this but people link are probably was classic in gaming. 2003. <laughs> That's oh, so gotcha. wild. Yeah, because right beneath it, I thought all I was gonna get was Final Fantasy when I typed in 13. But yeah, it, it was. How long is 13, then Final Fantasy 13. Does it say how many entries are there? How many people have, because uh, I think it usually says how many people have, have, have like, stated how long yes. it Yes, uh, pulled for the main story, 49. Eight oh, people okay. entered well, for the main and extras, 12 for the completionist, and 69 for all play styles. So, decent amount of folks. Yeah, enough to get a good overall, you know, general mm-hmm. ID, even if somebody's fucking around, which uh, is the only problem I really have with that, with that site, is somebody yeah. could... It says a total you know. of 169 people. Between yeah, that's the, not the bad GameCube, for an older PC, classic PS2, game. PS2, Xbox, and Unlisted. So that's... Ooh, GameCube. Holy shit, I forgot. It was on the GameCube, too. So I wonder how that came to be. That's really strange. Shit, man. Well, and it's also an insanely popular French comic book. Oh, that's how 13 started was a French oh. comic book writing about American presidents. Uh, and it's it's a rip off of Kennedy, basically. Um, the, even the president mm. even looks like Kennedy mm, sort of thing. Okay. That and it was it was little. one of those things. Yeah, that, makes sense. that might have been the popularity that well, and it's Ubisoft French. So it makes sense that maybe yeah. somebody there at Ubisoft was like, we want to tell the story to Americans. And they got David Duchovny during mm-hmm. X-Files, which is you couldn't have been more American <laughs> at that yeah. time. Unless you just got an eagle with a fucking cape made of flags. You right. couldn't have gone more American than David. You know, that's got to be so cool, because I'm sure the developers who worked on it were like, this is cool, and then they clearly didn't really light the world on fire. And, and to see it come back yeah. 16 years later, and, and people be like, whoa, it, it, it's got to be like yeah. a cool feeling. And as they reminisce on all that's changed between then and now, that's awesome. So good for the yeah. developers. Yeah, it's and, very and cool. I hope that game really uh, does well, and I'll, I'll definitely be giving it a look. Uh, but now we move into the Switch realm. So we're going to start off with Super Smash Brothers. Got new DLC. Uh, Nintendo announced that Joker was dropping on, I think it was April 17th now. 17th, yeah. 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 It was announced the day before it was coming out the following day. Um, alongside that, it came with a new stage, 11 new tracks, a video editor on top of a stage editor. Um, yeah, just a, a substantial That's amount insane. of content for a patch. Uh, you do have to pay, I should say, for for Joker, but I mean, I was playing as him. I've been playing as him a lot. He he plays extremely well. He's fun. Um, when you go and call in your persona, which uh, is a lot easier than you think it would be, because the the way the video promoted it, they're like, yeah, you got to do down B, and when you get hit with damage, is when uh, is when the bar will fill up a little bit quicker, but it also fills up faster if you're behind on stocks or damage. Um, so it kind of balances him out, but he does a fuck ton of damage when he calls in his persona. It's wild. Uh, he just feels fast and fluid, uh, but more than anything, it is a huge amount of exposure to a franchise that has been growing in popularity over the years. And now in just a short few days, come next week, we'll be talking about it. They're going to be making a lot of persona related announcements, presumably persona five on switch, as well as persona five Royal, which is going, or the Royal, I think it's called, which is going to. Uh, based off rumors and leaks, it's, it's going to include, um, I think they said, a new protagonist, new scenarios, a uh, much longer epilogue, and so on, which uh, is really exciting because those were, uh, at least the longer epilogue is something that I thought Persona 5 originally needed. But have you had a chance needed. to hop into Smash and try out the new DLC, if at all? Not the new DLC. Okay, cool. Nope, we find, I, I finally only got to play Smash like last month. Wow. For the first time ever. I think it's such got a... My, got my fucking butt kicked yeah kicked i think i won dude it's i a, think i won two matches out of like 12 it's a well i mean there were a bunch of people playing but yeah it, it yeah. really is because it looks so because of the character roster it looks so pick up and play like oh it, man it looks it's yeah and if somebody knows what they're doing it's it's not even like virtual fighter where i feel like or a fighting game where i feel like i can sort of there's a lot of shit that goes on on a small screen, and you're just like, what the fuck? Shit's really? going insane. Yeah. And there's a lot of mechanics that, like, 
I think are more complex than you would think if you looked at it. Yeah, because I always imagined Smash as being like a simple brawler, so to speak. But uh, when I started playing it, I think I got like 180 hours in it now. <laughs> and when I really started like diving... Wait, in this one? Yeah. Yeah, the man. fuck? I, I fucking love that lot. game. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm genuinely considering putting it on my 2019 Game of the Year list. Because we got it so late, and my Game oh, of the Year right. list was already complete. Because uh, I was on vacation at the time. So I was like, you know what? I, I'm just about to throw this on the 2019 list because this is definitely one of the best games i played. <laughs> like, it's so much fun, um, especially because that expansive roster, spirit mode's great. Um, they added new spirits, by the way, in this update. If you get Joker, they added, like, the entire Persona 5 roster in as spirits that you can acquire, which is pretty neat. But what I really wanted to personally start off the discussion with with this Smash DLC is... I feel as if fighting game DLC has always been lacking. And this is the first time I feel like a developer has got it. You know, a stage editor, a video editor. I'm not going to hype that up because I don't think the video editor is a huge deal. But still, a stage editor, that, and then a new character, new uh, stage in general, tons of new music. It gives such a great feel to the game. Why aren't other developers uh, like we've seen in Injustice 2? They just bring a character and that's it. But like the stages that you fight on why is that never a focal point to to bring new content for that new music you know I, I know it requires more effort but i feel like the fighters that we generally talk about on the show nether realm fighters smash brothers tekken dragon ball fighters uh, which only brought in one stage in its two-year life um you know i i feel like they need to to catch up with the times a little bit would you agree yeah i think the lack of stage dlc is the most infuriating part of, of fighters right now. Mm -hmm. I, I'm com because that's where you're fighting. I mean, yes, you got a new character, but you're also wanting to look at new stuff. And th there are so few games that actually are like, here's a new, and rarely new music. That's like even rarer yeah. than new stages. I think. I mean, unless I'm missing it, which is possible. You might have a theme for like Hellboy and in Injustice. I don't remember, but long story short like i want i would love more stages and especially 2d like a nether realms game not to i'm not saying it takes less but well in a way than a 3d stage with like knockouts it might take less and i'm really surprised um dead or alive 6 i think i was told that they are doing at least one stage and i think dead or alive in the past has done like one or two have you seen the price but of their dlc though no, but their game also did the free version too. They 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 released and then two weeks later their pricing went everywhere and I have I honestly haven't gone. Back I, see, I really like that fighter. I I haven't played it in a little bit, but I remember seeing a video. Dead or Alive Six. Yeah, I really enjoyed it, that. It's not it's not bad. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah, great fighter. It's fun. Yeah, I I saw yeah. it getting like sixes and sevens, and I think it's because people played the story and took it very seriously. And I said right off the bat before this game even came out, anyone who touches that game should not touch the story just because it's not. It's not what the game's about, but it's about just use it to learn. Yeah, and it has yeah. a very thorough tutorial. I mean, that's a that's a mm -hmm. great fighter. Very but, thorough. But it's DLC. That's that's just it, like I think all of its content combined prices over a thousand dollars. Like for Dead or Alive Six. Yeah. Like insanely high. What price. are they selling? Uh, what skins? Like... I think uh, here. Let's take a peek real quick. I know skins are a definite. <sighs> Dead or Alive uh, 6, sorry, DLC. Uh, I'd also like in the just, meantime to, to correct myself. I, I meant to mention that Dragon Ball Fighters does include um, tracks with the new characters. They they both include hey, their own individual cool. themes. It's cool. uh, a big deal to me. So this, the, the Dead or Alive season pass is $93. Um, you get two new characters and 62 costumes. For ninety three dollars, yeah, that's not acceptable. And then I mean, uh, I don't really have an answer for that other than that's not accept. Like, yeah, I, w I wouldn't, I won't support that uh, that kind of cost. Yeah, I'm looking right now at their DLC, and uh, we've got the Happy Wedding costume volume two, volume one. So it's it's everyone in wedding costumes, uh, core fighters. Uh, the season pass, of course, is ninety three. Uh, the character phase four, uh, Neo Tengu. Wait, what? I'm confused. Hold on. Let me, let me read this. Dead or Alive 6 story unlock key. What the fuck is this? $20. Okay. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. So originally the game was 60 bucks. Then they did the street fighter kind of thing where they gave you a quarter of it for a very low price and okay. you could choose fighter purchases from that point. 
and that's when the price got confusing to me. So I just never, I because I owned mm-hmm. the game. Um, but these other things you're talking about, that's it, oh, it's, so it's, that's why all the characters. Because I saw like Hayabusa, I'm like four dollars. Why? Okay, so that's how it all yeah. adds up. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck, man? There's just so a ton maybe of the DLC. ninety. There's just a ton of DLC. Well, that's the problem. It's confusing, and uh, it needs to stop. But. Yeah, all right, I'm looking right now. Holy smokes. All right, so what we've got is the season pass. Two volumes of costumes. All the characters from the game for $4 each. And the core fighters, 20 character set, $50. Unlock all 20 characters. Uh, This may be offered as a free trial for a limited time in the future. What the fuck? Yeah, they've done it once, too. where they They've already had it unlocked for a little while for free. I know people were playing it. Crazy. I like the idea. I do too. Of, of that because I don't think Killer Instinct handled it poorly. I think Killer Instinct was pretty good. Mm-hmm. They were like, "Here's your two. Then you got a free fighter to test every, was it month or week or something? I can't I remember how they, they like, was it monthly where I, it's like you can test out the like new fi- a, a new fighter right in the beginning. Yeah, we're talking about the, yeah right yeah, in the I, beginning. I, I want to yeah. say so, monthly because I played that game a okay. lot when it came out. I yeah. really like that and, game. And I and I'm. I am okay with companies offering a different st- a different tact on fighter on fighting games mm-hmm. for sure. Like I'm okay with that, but um, not at that cost. It needs to be the same, pretty much, like the same cost if you wanted to buy them all separately, or the same cost right. if you want to buy them as a group. But if you don't want to buy them all, it's cheaper. Like mm-hmm. to me, that just that's the way it makes sense. It's like you don't you don't just add these huge amounts of money. Also, that just hurts the fighter. I think. It, yeah, because the competitive scene will find it difficult if there's like all these different random things that they need to purchase, and mm-hmm. people just move on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, it, it, it's I, like I said, I think it's kind of perplexing when you look at it too. Like you just heard me live looking at it, going, "What?" Like I because I, I had no idea what I was looking at originally. It's just, it's and strange. I only know because somebody in my Discord likes it. I will say though, all intents and purposes, probably the best sidestep in a fighter. Oh yeah, since since the original sidestep was created that sidestep works for the first time in fucking years yep in a 3d fighter and And when i fought online a lot it fucking throws people off because it works you know why because i don't think anybody dude it's never worked but i mean virtual fighter three or four started using it and i remember that was the only one that worked and Mm -hmm. then years of them trying it and always felt sticky You'd be like, no, fucker, I double tap down. Like, yeah. go go in like, or go out. You'll try to double tap down, but you'd say you'll, like, crouch. And just yeah, you'll crouch, straight. and you'll get your ass kicked. And that game was the first – I don't know what it was. I, I would love to know if it's the input time, but when I when I got it, it was for an impressions code thing, and I was like, okay, mm-hmm. I'll check it out. And the first thing I checked was that, and I was like, are you shitting me? I can yeah. – fu- fuck, this changes ev- – because that's the best part about a 3D fighter to me is if you can sidestep, it changes – you know, does you know how the kicks come in? Like, right. well, it's like Sekiro. It's like where does the blade come in? And if you duck to the opposite side, it won't hit you. And mm-hmm. I love that kind of shit. Absolutely. So it's got some good elements. It's got some good elements for sure. I agree. I agree. So, yeah, fighting DLC is all over the place. It seems <laughs> it really does. But yeah, uh, I think Smash is leading the pack. If I'm honest, hopefully uh, a lot of well, it's got a mission see. editor, didn't you say, or a level editor? A level right? editor. Yeah. So it's already stage. it's already past anything i mean it's wild though because i was just saying like two weeks ago i said man imagine if this game had a stage editor and then they added it holy shit i mean that's a that's a it's that's just forever really i mm-hmm. mean it's like okay Especially well now we can i imagine they'll add the ability to share them popular stages available for download wait for wait 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 okay i'm sorry i thought you already could so you're saying right now i can make a stage of mine but i can't give it to you with a code of some kind i don't believe mm. so i think you i know you can mm. save them but i believe you can get your friends in a lobby together and fight on them okay okay so, so you kind can, of they can at least see it yeah okay okay so it's not just yours but yeah still i'd love for them to do kind of what doom snap map did upload it yep be able to yep. play other people's even if it's a code it. where it's like you can ship somebody the code and say seed, you know mm-hmm. how the, it used to be where yeah. it's like here's the seed and it's like eight digits and that makes your yeah. level. I would love, I would love for that. Well, yeah, yeah, that's very cool. Because I already saw someone create like their own mode where what happens is they have like a a, a pinwheel that's spinning. I saw that too. Yeah, that's the one like I'm talking ten, about. Yeah, there's like ten people. I'm like, I want to play that. The walls are doing this and yeah. like they're bounce. Yeah, that shit looked insane, man. Yeah, that's. Looked- 
awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> when cool. I saw that, I thought, man, I want to fucking play that, but I, I can't have access yeah. to it. So, I oh, that's too bad because that's what I was going to download. <laughs> that's actually the one me... I saw. I saw the video and I was like, this is fucking, that's crazy. Let like, even if, even if it's not good, it would still be cool that you could do it. Can you download Smash Ultimate Stage? Let's see. Uh, Maybe they're worried somebody will draw a dick on a level or something. Oh, dude, there's already a ton of dicks. Like, the first two things that just came up are <laughs> Smash Brothers Ultimate Stage Builder is a blessing and a curse, and Smash Brothers uh, Smash Bros. Ultimate Stage Builder unleashes the internet's wild creativity. Um, you gotta accept it, man. You you create a... You, you allow me to build something even with Legos, there's gonna be a dick on somebody with Yeah, dude, seconds. the first thing I said to my friends, I was like, I'm definitely building the dick stage. Just like two balls yeah, and then just a dick going two down balls into the... penis. Yeah. <laughs> that erupts occasionally or something like yeah, that. Yeah, someone that had one that was shooting lava out. Like, just people are yeah, making see, dicks not all over the place. I'm like, what the fuck? There we go. Uh, let's see here if the stage builder is available to, to download shit. Um... Stage Builder has a function that prevents you from drawing certain shapes. Those shapes include penises. Someone on Smash Brothers development team was paid to code and create penis detection software. Okay, so. Wow. Uh, that's crazy. They, they're trying to thwart us. Now I want to try it. Now I want to beat I want to beat their their penis detection software. I mean, they clearly failed because I saw a ton of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like when you build them too big, the software is just like, this can't be a dick. It's got to be an airplane. Oh my god, just some of this shit that... <laughs> oh man, these are hilarious. Um, Alright, so the article does say here... Um, this isn't the first time Nintendo's introduced a stage builder function in its game Super Mario Maker, for example, lets you share your stages online so the company has a basic idea of what to expect. Uh, okay. I don't know if that means you can share them online for download. Someone will have to let us know in the comments. Or I bet Twitter. you you would be seeing that if you typed it in. I, I it would, it yeah, would be a thing. I feel like I would have. So um, that's that, though. And now we stay on the Switch, but we move over to a different game. This time, it is one that uh, Carrick would like to talk about, and that is Dragon's Dogma. Yeah, I just, dude, like... Yeah, it's 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 crazy to be that wrong on a well, okay, so the system still has the issues I had with it originally, but like a lot of them have been fixed and a lot of the games that have come out have it's been the awesome. It's Dark Arisen, and right? This is Dark Arisen, yeah. Okay. And um well, I can't like explain anything about it cuz the embargo, it is just it's crazy to so LA Noir is sort of what started me back on the Switch because mm. I was sitting there playing it and I was like I'm playing LA Noir on the Switch, like that's pretty fucking crazy. And it and it it works really well. Like, it, you know, there's some frame rate hits. Gotcha. And it's just been crazy. T I got the new battery thing I was telling you about, you know, so I can play it longer, which it, it totally changed my world because that was another thing. Whenever something gets low battery, I get nervous. So, like, if something is 20%, mm -hmm. that already bothers me. Even though it's not at zero, I'm like, oh, fuck, it's mm -hmm. 20%. And that was stopping me from playing it for as long. Yeah. Um, but it's just, it's crazy to see Capcom do this because i personally believe it might also be a test uh for a uh, dragon's dogma 2 because this is something that internally i know the various teams have wanted to do dragon's dogma dragon's dogma online came out mm -hmm. only in japan right. for reasons i would never really be able to strange. explain very strange um and it's just like we start to see these games coming they're starting to run well i do believe one thing i've been asking around and i haven't got an answer is are the devs for switch sharing their data about optimization because doom i think it was doom or wolfenstein no, it was wolfenstein it released and it had some really bad textures and they patched it and they optimized it the fps went up they got everything fixed and it's it i'm i'm wondering if something got fixed in the background because i swear to god a lot of switch games are running better than they were before mm -hmm. and to me that's cool because that means you know there's more of a chance of some of these games that i would never have thought would be on the go if i want them on the go can be on the go on the switch um and then of course on the switch too uh you know look even better or what have you but it's just it's fucking crazy dude it's like it's so weird to be playing dark arisen on the switch it's it's the weirdest feeling because I just never thought that that would occur, especially because the Xbox One and PS4 didn't handle it well. I don't know if you played those versions. Yeah, I played the 360 they had... version. Yeah, the 360 version handled it better, actually, mm -hmm. than the Xbox Xbox One and PS4. They were a little janky on FPS. Mm -hmm. And um, 
well, maybe not more janky, but you expect them to do better. Gotcha. If that makes sense, because they're more powerful. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just it's awesome. I, I'm just really excited to finally see these kind of games on the Switch. And I'm, I mean, it's every single. It seems like once a month there's some game where I'm all wait, what? That's coming out on the Switch? It's like, wild. It's like this never-ending euphoria. <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. It's cool I, to support a portable for me. For I, uh, I found an article, because I, I could have sworn I saw something, and I was right, that the director of Devil May Cry 5, who did work on Dragon's Dogma, uh, said in reflection during of his past 25 years on Capcom... Um, admitted that prior to taking on the role of director for DMC5, he lobbied executives to either allow him to work on a new DMC or create Dragon's Dogma 2. Naturally, the feeling was that a return to DMC would be something of a better choice right now, but returning to Dragon's Dogma is something Itsuno would love to take on at some point. So, I, I never take the would love to super seriously because we're human. Right. I, I would love... I talk about every fucking show shit I'd love to do. Um, but still, I think... Those were two options that were presented to Capcom. They were this close to having it happen. I imagine uh, if he's still talking about how he'd love to, it hasn't happened yet. But um, he said the reason he'd love to go back is because he thought that Dragon's Dogma was the biggest challenge he's experienced in his career that spans a quarter of a century. This info comes from GameRant.com. But uh, yeah, so I wouldn't say that a, a Dragon's Dogma 2 is out of the realm of possibility by any stretch. Uh, and DMC5 did. did well. Mm -hmm. so exactly. maybe that'll help it even more right exactly maybe. i yeah, it did, uh, uh, God, it so good. I wanted to play uh dark arisen again i played it on the ps4 for a little bit and what's weird is the original version the worst version of it clicked with me i really liked it it's not like i played it and didn't like it just there's something that's failed to grab me with dark arisen so is there a switch effect here is there something that i'm gonna plug this sucker in and i'm gonna be like oh yeah i love dragon's dogma again i mean i'm i'm telling you guys like i i played the original version like the no fast travel version where i had to fucking run everywhere and i was like this game's the shit hidden gem i still talk positively about it because i know like just dark arisen at times doesn't click with me i was not a fan as much of the dark arisen content as i was the original game because hmm. dark arisen content was almost like a rogue kind of game it was just like time at climb a tower almost yeah. And well, not almost. I guess that's what it was. But um I would say that there probably is a switch effect because you are playing this game that you did not expect to engage with on the Switch. So I think a lot of people will probably regardless of, you know, anything else will end up liking it for that. Right. Um I think what's I think what'll be interesting is to see if people look at it like they did with Skyrim, where with Skyrim you're like, "Holy shit, I'm playing this on a handheld." Yes, it's locked at 30, but it's locked at 30. And see if people react in that way because it is this massive title that, gotcha. you know, because Dark Arisen is another, I can't remember how many hours. But Dark Arisen is another, Good yeah, 50, a ton of 60, hours. Yeah, and so um, I, I don't, I don't rightly know. I will say that I was, no, I can't say that. Sorry. Um, trying to walk around anything. No, I mean, I'll just you, say. Yeah, if you can, it's all good. Yeah, I'll just say that. Um, I certainly could see it getting new fans for Dark for for Dragon's Dogma because it's on the Switch and they may not have experienced it. Um and it fits that where it's like it's a full you know you almost said it with VR. Oh yeah, there's a lot of VR games but they're not full games. You know, they're this or that and with the Switch we've spent a long time where it felt like mobile games that were up, you know, like more was added or there was the occasional gem. Right. But now we're starting to get the LA New Wars or whatever and you're like fuck this is pretty insane and then you, you know yeah and then you're getting skyrim and you're like damn this is running well doom and all, all that kind of stuff so i i could see it definitely getting fans because of that yeah. right and then also speaking of the switch getting stuff now we're, we're seeing like mortal kombat 11 coming around oh that's a, that's time. the other one i was trying to bring yeah 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 yep. so that and they awesome. showed a trailer and it looked Solid. I mean, it looked what like it looked solid. It looked like what I would expect, mm -hmm. you know, them graphically to be able to yeah, pull. Because well, here's the thing that people will fail to realize. I feel some at least uh, is that they have to hit 60 FPS for that game, and yeah. that definitely comes with more 
graphical con- uh, concessions than concessions in, in general. Even if they wanted to get it functioning, now they got to dial it back a little bit more so they can run at that yeah. higher frame rate, and, and that's what's going to happen. Yeah. So you'll probably see the videos of here's why Dragon's Do- or Dragon's Dogma, here's why Mortal Kombat 11 on the Switch is fucking hideous. But I, I think it's within good reason. I would rather a fighter like that run at 60 fps the whole way i think yeah, there'll be some funny screenshots I mean, from it but uh it's gonna happen yeah probably. but i mean that's sort of required for that game mm-hmm. right like it's it not absolutely is. even dragon's dogma could drop fps and you'd be like okay whatever but yeah with like with like a mortal Kombat or something like that i don't think i, I think of all the things you want to worry about it's fps first everything else after that mm-hmm. exactly and that's what a lot of gamers preach so we'll see if that uh is followed up properly but um dragon's dogma on the switch when does that come out uh, the review is Monday, um, so I would assume twenty third. Yeah, twenty third. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, that that'll probably be one I, I pick up over the summer or something because I want to give it one more shot. Sometimes the switch just something clicks, something happens. Um, not yeah. that I didn't like Dragon's Dogma again, but it's one like I want to go back and replay. And I think maybe the the switch version, especially with the the power thing that you showed me and I now have. Um, that thing, is- it's a tank. I love it. It is a tank. It is a tank, <laughs> but that indicates that there's a lot of battery life I don't have to worry about, mm-hmm. which makes me happy. Amen. All right. And the last topic, which is a pretty sad one, but also exciting, is that The Last of Us Part Two cinematic filming has concluded. A photo was released on uh, Neil Druckmann's Twitter account. It was of Ellie and Joel, the actors of them, Troy Baker, and I, I can't remember Ellie's actress right now. Oh my God! What is Neither it? Neither can I. Holy shit! Hold on. I almost wanted to say Ashley Olsen. It's obviously not, by the way. I think you, Ashley, you might be on the right track. Ellie is Ashley right? The Last of Us, uh, actress Ashley Johnson. Okay, Ashley, so you were you were on the right track with the Ashley. I thought I thought it wasn't Ashley. Anyway, um, yeah, there was a photo uh, released that showed them in their mocap suits pretty much indicating that filming for the game was complete now they have to put it all in the game of course but um yeah they also showed like the end script and uh it seems like this game is making some some serious progress what do you think about the last of us part two are you excited when do you think we'll see it more importantly not insanely excited but i think we will see it um i I think we'll yeah i think i think there's if they just filmed the last scene of the cutscene stuff, mm-hmm. the, the not certain companies do that at the end, and then other companies do it at the beginning. But I'm assuming if they film that and they're done, that means they can't really change gameplay that much, which means they already have the gameplay done or or very close to done. Mm-hmm. Um, so actually, like this fall, because we haven't got an answer right on it is PS4. Presumably, it's not PS4. It's not five. Presumably. Then it it might be their big winter title, like I could see them doing that, but I don't have any data on when that one's coming out. I, like I haven't heard any rumors even. Mm. Yeah, they've kept it. I'm surprised too. They they've really, kept it pretty they, they tight, really haven't have. they? It literally just says Neil Druckmann said just shot this scene so, and then a sad face, and it literally says cut to black, the end, and it was just an image of the script from the final scene of the mm-hmm. game um which you know i i god i don't know how to word it but like i don't usually get all like oh shit like but i just remember the last of us part two was or sorry last of us the first one was one of a few games that um i won't spoil it but just certain moments in the story literally like automatically sprung me out of my chair and like i was grabbing my head like no fucking way like it's I just feel like it's so rare nowadays for games. Yeah, you know, it happens like I'd say once or twice a year where a game sticks in your head Grabs and re- you. really fucking pops you out of your chair with this just natural human reaction of surprise, even though it's it's all just graphics on a screen, right? Like sometimes it just feels like that's all it is, but when it like hits you and you go, "Oh shit!" Like you know, The Last of Us was w- one game man that did it so hard to me and and blew my fucking mind especially at the end of the first act holy shit i didn't see that coming um just a fantastic game and i'm i'm very excited for the part two so why aren't you as excited is it because we've seen very little it's because unlike you i think i'm i think 
I only know one other person who feels the same way I do about the story, but I felt that it, sh- I, it's going to sound gross, but it shot its load right at starting. Mm. You know, I, it, it, the, I mean, yeah, like, I get that. And th- from that point on, it was hard for me to be like, that's a pretty poignant starting. Mm-hmm. And I get why they did it. But sometimes when a show has, so sometimes it pays off, say John Wick, like John Wick loses his dog, right? Mm-hmm. And the rest of the movie is just about him fucking mowing people down. <laughs> that worked. But it also worked because it, he wasn't highly emotional from that point. Well, the emotion was a revenge. There wasn't the up and down. The problem with a up and down story emotionally is if the front end is really high, the rest for me has to somehow be higher, and it never did. It never got to that point. Um, which is to indicate that the starting's really good. Mm-hmm. Very good. It just after that, it wasn't as much. And so to me, I, I don't even know. I mean, I'll return for it for review if I get a review code. But if I don't get a review code, I probably will not even experience it. I'll probably watch a video of somebody playing it or talk to the people in the Discord. Like it just, unless like one of you guys is like, dude, the gameplay is like fucking knocking out of the park or something like that. Then, then there's a chance. It seems but like it's, it'll it, knock it out of the park in a way where it just feels very real. I mean, we saw a snippet of true graphically where, where yeah. some of the shit that Ellie did. I mean, I, I don't believe that's like final product stuff, but some of the shit that she did and the way she just naturally interacted with the environment around her right. as, as she fought. Holy fuck. It was so crazy what she did. That yeah, it was definitely cra- crazy enough to make you question, which yeah. is cool. That's that's always that's the good, the good kind of crazy mm-hmm. in a weird and the way. The skeptic in me says question. like, all right, it's probably not the final product, Matt. So if it is, oh my god, that'll be crazy. I keep saying crazy, but holy shit, like th- that's what happens. A game gets so good, it just neuters your vocabulary, and you're like, well, how else do well, you I think describe it's, this? I mean. I think it's awesome people. It's just, it was just one of the very few. I know people who don't like bully, right? And I like, bu- I, I just think bullies in, insane, but I get why people for some reason just don't, mm-hmm. just don't dig it. I know a lot of people who like certain uncharteds and don't like the others. So yeah, sometimes it works. Sometimes it wasn't. Yeah, I get it. So, I mean, I'll just probably wait. Also, since we don't know anything about it, I, I will need to see more gameplay. Cause if like the gameplay, it's a little bit like uh, days gone. Where if you haven't played it and you see the trailer, you're Hello. bad or hmm, good. Oh. Just hmm, what's and that's sort of how I feel with this one. Mm. Is just like I'm like I gotta wait until I see more of it to sort right. of even draw. Like what is it gonna be like? Is it gonna be super story based? Is it gonna be like Uncharted where it's like a mixture of puzzle and climbing? Like yeah. uh, you never know. Enemy design will be important. Absolutely. Oh God! Very important. Now, yeah. Now that I think about it. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. <laughs> I, I, you know, this, the thing is that the, the clickers, I think they're called, right? Um, yes, the clickers is. What yeah, they're those were fucking terrifying. But I've kind of lost my taste for like one hit kill enemies because it feels like, especially when you encounter them in stealth segments. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't mind repeating sections. I should repeat. I should mention that first. But if for me, it feels very. PlayStation 2, Xbox original generation when you have to repeat stealth segments because you got caught by someone or because uh, something one hit kill you, hit, hit, one hit kills you. I feel like gameplay should always be open-ended where, where you can constantly react to the situation around you. Um, not that you can't die or that you can't restart, right. but that it's not just game over if you get caught because that that's where it feels very dated and old. And I think... That might have been something that could have, I don't know, but bothered you with The Last of Us 1, because I'd say that was its one gameplay flaw. I thought that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this, the parts of the clickers, you know, you could usually maneuver around. It was intense, and it, it successfully achieved what it had to, but um, it still, I think, felt very old in that sense, because it, it would send you back if you fucked up. And it was more about, I think the action in that game is just more about getting you to the next cutscene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where um, this one might be, since it looks so good, maybe this one will be a little bit more about like allowing you to engage in you know those cool elements during the game, and then also the cutscenes are awesome, which right. could then elevate it even you know w- way above the first one. Also, sequels are that's the reason why I like sequels because mm-hmm. a lot people diss on sequels all the time. Fucking dude, that's to me that's where a company looks and says, hey, we got away with it. People loved it at the time, technology wise, you know, it was impressive. What do we need to do now? Right. And then they. They nail it. Uh, so 
this could actually be the one that ends up causing me to be like, what the fuck? And maybe even return to the original. Yeah, curious how they they create new gameplay systems because Last of Us 1, pardon me, was created during a time where we didn't see the, a ton of crafting in games all the time. You know, because you had the backpack, you could take a knee and put like a, a nail in your in your plank or you could create a Molotov real quick on the fly. Uh, and it was all done in real time. And if and, Or you could create like a, a can grenade that shot out nails, something like that. Um, and that worked really well for its time. But nowadays we see it so much. It's like, what yeah. does The Last of Us Part Two do? Do they offer new weapons like a crossbow, for example? And now you can craft your own bolts and that kind of allows for something familiar but yet new feeling because i feel like not enough games use crossbows but anyway um personal bias on that aside i feel like um that's a, a an, an element of the gameplay they're gonna have to really try to drive forward because i don't feel crafting is as uh, i guess like that unique that, anymore yeah it's unique but like the item yeah. management has sort of lost the sizzle i feel it was really cool to see that in those types of games back then but now it's every game's doing it because well look i mean it's like Resident Evil when we were kids, man. You'd be playing it, and you'd be like, oh, you got to work on your inventory, and now you're like, I don't want to work on the inventory. Yeah. <laughs> you know, know, you grew out of it. You know, it was cool for one or two games, and then all of a sudden you're like, nah, I'd rather not. So. Yeah, well, hopefully it comes out within... I doubt it's coming out this year, but I would love to you see really, it. Really? So what do you think? Next summer, maybe? Maybe a summer game? Because it could do well as a summer game. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's a game that's... That and Ghost of Tsushima, I, I feel like those are two titles they really don't have to rush out. Um, yeah. The only reason I don't include Death Stranding in that conversation is, is I personally feel like the internet's really hyping that one up because it's a Kojima game and he's free from the shackles of Konami. So I feel like expectations are really high on that, and the longer it's sitting in its stasis, stasis developing uh the, the more expectations are built and the more the product can be damaged from that right um but yeah i i feel like the last of us part two i don't know if they've confirmed it yet but i feel like that's a game that might end up being uh a launch ps5 type of thing PS5. i just really do because i feel like a lot of people keep thinking new consoles next fall and i really truly believe that gaming's popular enough and we saw the switch and how well it did by selling consoles in March that these, these guys could come out in spring next year and we'd be fine, which would then put the last of us part two around then I feel where I would have originally anticipated it anyways. And imagine this because the rumor is that horizon zero dawn two, whatever that would be called would be on PS five as well. It's going to be because they, they released a new IP. What two years ago, so they immediately start working on the next one because it was such a great selling exclusive. So you know that's going to be in the PS5 come 2020 spring. Is it ready? I don't know. But like the PlayStation could have a fucking crazy launch lineup if things pan out. Like, yeah, maybe just maybe go with like three big games. Like Death Stranding, um, Horizon Zero Dawn 2, Last of Us Part 2. How could you even choose? I know I wouldn't choose that stranding, but uh, that's just I funny. wouldn't. I was gonna say I, <laughs> I would be like at least it. right now. I'm I'm definitely not like on fire about that game. Um, I think that's probably their best bet. I personally, and this is just me saying this. Okay. It would be this will not happen, by the way, um, because of timing. But I do believe that also what would be amazing if there was a Spider-Man two day one. <sighs> Because it ties in the co the current huge comic book, you know, group. Spider Man did well. Um, it's obviously timing wise, it's just not it's not feasible. But um, whether it could be another superhero, you mm -hmm. know, that that. But I don't know why. I was thinking about that a couple of days ago. I was like, what would because in the in the past when a console launched way past, there was always, for example, a Sega s system. You always knew there was going to be a racing game, a fighting game, and a platformer. That was like the typical. There was always a very typical thing you could track. And then about the, I guess, guess Xbox 360, PS2, three days, um, they didn't really do that. It was just like, here's a system and there's some, you know, up and then there's one or two games. But there was never that title that you were like, fuck. Right. And I do wish they would return to that. I do want um, a PS5 or an Xbox for me to go, what the fuck? Like day one. Because Game Pass is great, and up titles are great, but 
I just don't feel like the PS4 had a title where I was like, fucking A. Mm -hmm. And Xbox One didn't have a title where I was like, fucking A. I'm on it. Yeah, and I got you. It, I would love for these, and especially if they are more expensive, Manny, mm -hmm. that would go a long way. So imagine they were like, okay, we, we don't want to lose our shirts on this, so we're going to you know throw some pack-ins, we're going to do a little bit more expensive, but we're going to have these three huge games, Death Stranding, Last of Us 2, that right. and and um Ghost of Tsushima that could work yeah that could that that I think that would be an amazing release lineup for a system okay yeah, yeah. that would be awesome yeah, that would be I'd awesome be about that. I forgot about Ghost too yeah hmm. even though I mentioned it but yeah I mean we'll see I feel like I feel like they're going to go big this launch generation Microsoft's more peculiar because we can kind of predict uh, predict what sony's going to do because of of how things have released and and the success of all their exclusive titles but with microsoft nothing's really clicked and presumably yeah. what they're working on like i'd say what forza forza motorsport 8 would it be you know i'm sure you can it would be 8 and it would be horizon 5 yeah would be the two okay, would be so there which are there and horizon just, 4 horizon. admittedly did insanely well yeah, right it horizon was this was, fall yeah. yeah so i'd imagine motorsport 8 i feel like halo it forza yeah halo and maybe gears 5 and then the coalition or what or that maybe it's not the coalition but there's the other dev that was working on that one game that like came mm -hmm. and went um oh, yeah it'll be I'm interesting be that that gears. That's one of the problems I think that Microsoft has is that um, it's easy to ignore the really good games they do have because they do have a couple that are really good. But then you also have like the Quantum Breaks, right? Mm -hmm. Apologies, where, Gears, where, like, Gears 5 is, is set to release this year. So I was incorrect okay. on that. Okay, Gears 5. Um, but even a Gears, I would like something really surprising. I want something new. I would like. Some. I feel like Halo yeah. is going to be a, a big one. I feel you know, what they they, I think they released how much they spent on it. It's going to be like the most expensive game ever. Uh, in the yeah, I don't of care about budget. that. Yeah, I'm just saying like clearly they're they're trying to do it all. Like, yeah, we're they care. Gonna yeah, see right. Battle Royale. We're going to see a big story. Presumably those RPG elements that a lot of us were speculating about based off rumors. Um, I feel like you're going to see all of that, which is more so why Microsoft's going to absolutely backpedal on what they said about not putting battle royale in halo because they spend so much money the only on battle royale we care about is the battle rifle yeah <laughs> was what they said the yeah. only br we care about yeah and i was like yeah just you wait <laughs> wait till you see that apex and fortnite money you're gonna be like whoa hold on Halo's popular yeah. enough um but yeah I'd, I'd like to see something new um that's one thing that i really appreciate about uh, not that sony didn't have this but microsoft's launch lineup for the xbox one was Dead or Alive, or not Dead or Alive, Dead Rising, which wasn't new, but Rise was new. Um, oh, Killer true. Instinct true. wasn't new, new, but but a remaster remake that was really yeah. fucking fun. Um, true. And there was something else. While well, PlayStation, it was had more Knack, of a kill zone. It was more of an old school. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, Knack. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, Kill Did you Zone. Ever review for Knack example. Too? No. Okay. All right. I just wanted to know. Um, but I would, I would, I would kill if they were like, Xbox XXL has you know like Killer Instinct too. Like that would oh, be. Yeah. Microsoft did go a little old school now that you read those in their original, uh, in those in those day and dates, which that's cool to me. Like mm -hmm. that would be awesome. I think Rise. Ignore it all you want, but there's there's a lot of games that are very popular that play a lot like Rise, and you can bitch about Rise all you want, but when you actually look at it, it's like it got some some shit because it was a connect title at first and then transferred over a lot of these games do get shit in that way too where they're one thing and then you know we see it with world war z i beat rise twice like, so I'll, I'll admit it i like that game I, yeah i beat it twice as well yeah, yeah me too um so it, it would be cool to see what they do i also like the story in rise which i believe was actually i wouldn't say criminally underappreciated but was a bit underappreciated for I some agree. of the cool elements they have and what they told and what you find out at the end and you're just like whoa yeah that's... the ending was good i thought the ending was good yeah yeah so it, yeah it'll be interesting to see what microsoft does i think these ninja theory you know something at e3 that they might show oh um ninja you know, see some well dude that's <laughs> i mean reboot, that's probably. like Im imagine a ninja gaiden game you know on even on current gen technology that I... was like sekiro but next I'll, ninja gaiden people would shit themselves over right now not that I wouldn't buy a PS5, but 
if Microsoft was like, we're rebooting Ninja Gaiden and it's a launch title, I'm sold. I wouldn't have had to hear another fucking thing. I, yeah, I, that, it's, I forgot Ninja how Gaiden. big that game is. And I, that's the thing oh. people forget, too. If you if you look at Microsoft's IP list, they actually have some bonkers in there. Mm. It's just they haven't done much with them. I think Phil Spencer's the type of guy, though, that might. That's I mean, he let Crackdown ignore it, like it, dislike it, whatever. Um, he let uh, it Because I wasn't a, hu a huge fan. He let it happen and let it live to, to see what would happen. And maybe there's something out there that we don't know of that it's like, you know, they're just slowly working on. It'd be cool. Usually we get leaks, though, right? Yeah, it's been Usually really we get leaks. It, it, it has. And it, in fact, one or two of the big leakers that I know of don't even work there anymore. Um, so they, they can't leak. And that's why some of the leaks that I think we would have seen by now haven't even, they, they like legit haven't come out. Um, yeah, we haven't heard much. Halo. But that's... Yeah. Halo. Halo's really the only one. That's another Halo. <laughs> I mean, I like Halo, but it's... You know what I mean? I mean, on the... I say that, but if they do something crazy with Halo, that will sell. Like, if oh. we know there's four-player on screen, they said they're putting split-screen back in. If they did something crazy, Infinite being the title name, if they did something that, like, none of us expect... Um, I could see that being a huge system seller, like the return of Halo. It it absolutely could. So I shouldn't I shouldn't diss on Halo. It's just the, uh, the pattern hasn't been. I was that. gonna say I don't think I think it's it it doesn't bode well if I personally believe at least the best Halo game to come out during the Xbox One generation was Halo Wars Two, and I know that wasn't super great, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Son of a bitch, that hurt to even hear. <laughs> And Halo so, Wars, I, man. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, yeah. Halo Wars 2 was like a, you know, I don't do number scores, but you define it as like a solid 7 or 8. You know, it, it was a good game. Uh, but it had, I know there were some people who had issues with, I think it was called the Blitz mode or whatever. Uh, it, like you could pay to win kind of with the cards. So I And I had nothing but bugs. Nothing mm -hmm. but bugs in that game. I had some bugs but... at times too. Yeah. I remember in the but first yeah, fucking I mean, mission, uh, the, the, the Warthog went to ride off some, some jump and I sunk and froze. right on the map. Yep. Yep, I have that in my review video. I was just like, what the fuck? Because I really, I didn't want to like it, but I mean, I expected to. It, like, mm -hmm. it looked like, you know, and an RTS on a console done right is going to be a awesome. system seller. Mm -hmm. It would, Yeah, it'll be, and it just hasn't yet been done right. Um, so it, also, dude, I, we might be thinking inside the box too. Like Microsoft or Sony, if their release is day and date, they could be like, here's a VR game. Mm -hmm. Or here, like, you know, remember, Microsoft, um, you can use the Rift on the Xbox. Right. Um, you just can't use it in a ton of shit. But it's like, what if they're like, you know, what if there is something? What if it's like, well, Halo and they HoloLens they fuck with. But it's like, what if Halo is Pancake version and VR? And suddenly you're like, oh, fuck. Like, yeah. there's... One of them, I just have a feeling one of them's going to do something. You and I are going to be sitting here going, what? My my guess like, would probably <laughs> be, you. Know, everyone always thinks of like the big three launch games. My guess is one of them is going to do like six, seven. Like here's a ton of options instead of just three. Oh, that yeah. would be awesome, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be awesome if they were like, like here's two here's VR system, games, but... two indies, three big ones. Yeah, and and they got to get a fighting game. I think fighting games are slightly coming back, so it'd be great. Um, racing is middling, sometimes popular, sometimes not. Um. But yeah, it would be awesome to see something surprising. It would be great if you had six or seven real solid backups to make you purchase a title, a, a console. Because I require a lot of games to purchase a console. If I do it for that, reviews, but I if I wasn't reviewing. Right, right, right. I feel you. I'm the same way. I, I always tell the story of how I didn't buy an Xbox 360 until like 2009, I think. You know, I was... Yeah, right. Two was, years later, right? I, exactly. I was really... Two, I think two, two and a half, three. Two I was and a half, really yeah. late, and the reason I bought it was out of all games, Resident Evil 5 and Call of Duty World at War. Like, it wasn't even like I was sold on something huge. Granted, I was a lot more, uh, for lack of better words, casual back then. But, um, yeah, I just feel like if I expect any company to do, like, seven games, for example, it would be Microsoft, because they've always been about presenting options and lots of them. That is true, I feel true, like yeah. that just fit their mantra. Like, here's a fighting game, a racing game, an action-adventure game, a multiplayer game, an indie game, a VR game. Go crazy. That would be... <laughs> Yeah, it's dude. I do. It, I do feel that there's going to be some surprises that like we're missing. Whether it's even just because their input devices are different than we're not expecting. Um, there hasn't been a lot of leaks. That's what's crazy. Like even what, for example, what PS4, what they just talked about. 
other than one leaker who has been right, no one else leaked that. No one. So one leaker had a paste bin that was right. Mm. No one else. So that indicates that it's pretty ironclad, probably pretty early too. But it's pretty ironclad, which is cool because then it means like I love to be surprised. Like I, I hope this E3. I mean, I have a weird feeling Microsoft is just going to be like, I'm not getting my hopes up, but it would be a good time for them to be like, look at us, and uh, look at our you, future. I, I don't yeah. see any other option. If they come out just with like a you know, solid conference, I thought last year theirs theirs was great. Theirs was arguably one of the best. Uh, very much, yeah, Man. yeah. But yeah. Uh, I would also they love to see them one indie game that uh, oh, that Dmart worked on. Uh, it was that. That 16-bit nighttime game that um, had a really cool art style. Uh, oh Jesus, the techno. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not out yet, but yeah, yeah uh, 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 Babylon. No, not Babylon, but yeah, I know, I know the one you're talking mm-hmm. about. Yeah, yeah, man, that that yeah. game looked awesome. That was one of the games that was shown off at Microsoft's and CD Projekt Red working with them. You know, Microsoft's going to bring out more of that this year. I, yeah, they got to come out swinging for sure. There is that one rumor, and it went away. Well, I would say a rumor and a half because one person half verified it and then one person stated it for sure. So, um, but that is that CD Projekt Red like is very much going to be doing something with Microsoft at the event. At, yeah, at, I so. thought that was kind of a safe bet. You know, we know Cyberpunk's I, coming out this year. Yeah. You know, so. I Well, what I mean is it... Mm, yeah, it just a rumor didn't sound like it was going to be a normal. Here's our game, w- oh. whatever that means is yeah, like is like here's our next gen technology and here's a game. Here's something I don't know. I don't know. Well, and they it, said it, they're it, releasing two AAA games by 2021. So you think they're showing what they're doing next too? Oh, it could. Yeah, like I don't. Mm. Again, because just what I heard, one made sense. Right and lines up and then the other half made sense and then the other half sounded like uh, a fantasy novel so i was just, <laughs> i was just like what uh, but they both are pretty solid so i'm just waiting to see if like some you know if we see somebody else pop off with a couple of these and then you know you can start to sort of believe it um but i think microsoft that would make sense even if it is just cyberpunk and just, i say just cyberpunk not in a bad way but i'm mm-hmm. saying even if it's just them saying okay here it is on the xbox x and you know, because I think that's another question too, right? Like, how is it going to run on current, which is what the majority of consumers are are using. Um, also, I could see them doing something crazy, which is so we talked about this, and I know you got to go because I think I'm holding you, but you're you not have like, yeah, you, you, you <laughs> have like I took off my glasses. You thought like I was like, all right, character. To fuck. No, I just looked at the time. It has no, been two hours, but um, good. so. I could see Microsoft doing something really unique where they're like, here's me playing on the Xbox Cyberpunk, and then here's me on my PC playing the game and you, like push a button and the save moves over. Okay. Like little things to indicate that they're moving towards, they made it clear, Xbox original is your low-end PC, that's why mouse and keyboard's available, and then you have Xbox X's middle, and then you have whatever they've got planned for like Ultra, and then you have your PC, which is Ultra Ultra or whatever. Right. Um, I like the idea of them saying, Here's our ecosystem, and it's not just the console. Um, it's uh, the announcement of the new store, for instance, on the PC. The PC w- Windows Store is abysmal. It's legit yeah. terrible. So what if they were like, today we're announcing the new store, and you know it were it just it just works. I was gonna say. Todd, to Todd, Todd Howard, it. Todd, Todd Ray's, but yeah, I mean, I would love for them to be like, and hey, you want to move your save game? Just, right. and you know you're you're transferring be between the two seamlessly yeah that would uh, i'd i'd be pretty stoked to see that um mm-hmm. be, it, because it's not a game that's something microsoft can push that only they can push is like because they soundly beat sony in multiple ways when it comes to network so it's like mm-hmm. in, it's microsoft started, could also right? like, yeah and well, yeah, and like the Xbox Live is better. It's faster. It's like, what if they're just a like, lot here's, <laughs> yeah. So if they don't have a ton of games, or they do, I would also like them to mix in why they're better at that because that's a strength that is hard to sell. But when you do, people always nod. Everybody I know who has a, P- they might like the PS4 ten times better. Mm-hmm. But whenever I'm like, well, the Xbox, when it comes to like these services and stuff, they're like, yeah, that is, <laughs> that is, le- that is legitimately true. Like, so that would be cool for Microsoft to say, hey, here's what, 
here's what we're offering that's not games, but that are also these side services that help it all come together. Because I think we're still missing some of those. Mouse and keyboard support's been added, but we haven't seen a ton. Mm -hmm. It'd be great if they were like, here's 50 games that that's working for. Um, there's some cool stuff that they could do on the side, for sure. All right. We'll see how it all pans out, but that happens to be uh, the final segment. Somehow we went from that was a, that that segment is literally named in my notebook. Last of Us Two filming complete. <laughs> oh, is we, it? Yeah. Oh, that was whoa. And somehow we got oh, because yeah, we I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. PS launch titles. I, that's what I yep. love. Like if if someone could create like a tree graph on how <laughs> characterized episode. topics yeah, just boy. progress there, how we got deeper it, it, and deeper in the rabbit hole. <laughs> Yeah, it'd probably just be a bunch of what they have. I would like to see somebody try to do that with our Spider-Man, that one that one podcast where we started out talking about Spider-Man, suddenly it was co-op. And we were like, <laughs> well, I, admittedly, I think that was me just finally getting excited about it and being like, I got an idea. And it was just so stupid, but it was fun. But I mean, yeah, it would be we'll funny to see somebody try to track it. I feel like that's not a oh, the next one. Yeah. If they're like, yeah, you can play as Miles. And it's the story, right? If it does, yeah. it does. And, and Mary Jane dies, it'd be amazing. Oh, Hopefully God. she dies right at the start. Sorry, I hate <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, next week is our big episode 200. Um, we got some plans, some announcements for you guys. Um, like I said, we're not, we're going to try to get a guest. We'll see. But um, it's not like a blow the lid off of everything type of uh, big big deal. We just kind of want the show to continue as is. And a lot of the things we changed, like the, the artwork, the thumbnail, etc. Uh, the the fl flick of buck stuff that was like stuff that was done weeks and weeks ahead of time where we just didn't want to sit on it so we kind of gradually rolled out all these new changes over time um but anyway next week or yeah next week i almost said tomorrow <laughs> next week is the big day uh we hope you all enjoyed this episode and we'll catch you guys next time peace out peace out